Hi, uh, good afternoon and welcome to a webinar from Linköping University. Uh, my name is Therese Winder and I'm going to guide you through this session. Today we are going to learn about our program in industrial engineering and management. Uh, but before I introduce my guests, I thought I'd just run a few housekeeping um, things by you. Um, you can ask questions, uh, but we will answer them at the end of the webinar and you can see chat questions polls and people uh, to your right on the screen uh, put your questions in the questions section uh, not in the chat we will be looking at the questions that are posted in the questions section the webinar is also being recorded um, but i think that's that's it so without further ado i'd like to introduce my two guests uh, matthias would you like to start introducing yourself Thank you, Therese. Uh, my name is Matthias Henningsson, and I'm the program director for this program. Uh, and I'm working here as a senior lecturer, and I'm also having a couple of courses in the program. Thank you. And Liki? Hello, uh, my name is Likit Madhu, I'm, and I'm from south part of India, and I have been uh, uh, I'm in the final stages of my master's, so I'm, I'll am i be completing my master's this month. So I'm a final year, stu uh, final year student in industrial engineering and management at LIU. Thank you very much. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to hearing from, from both of you, but I, I thought we should start with Matthias and, and just have a bit of a background on the program. I mean, what, why do we offer it? What's the, what's the aim really? Yeah, Liu has a reputation here in Sweden uh, with industrial engineering and management. We started a, a Swedish program 1969, it was, and we are now the, the oldest and the largest program uh, in Sweden. So we have about 200, 250 students each year uh, going this program. So that means that we have a, a lot of um, specializations, a lot of courses and so on in industrial engineering and management. So that's why we, we started the master program like almost 10 years ago now. And what we want to give the students is um, you have a background in engineering, for example, mechanical engineering, computer science, electronics. Uh, it could also be something else. And we want to give you industrial engineering and management knowledge, uh, how you, you run your company or something like that, together with your knowledge in, uh, in a more engineering subject. So that's a little bit about uh, our program. Mm, thank you. Nikki, what, what attracted you to the program? Well, uh, I, I, all, I, I always wanted to do my master's in Nordic countries. And after my mechanical and having a background in mechanical engineering, I wanted to do a management course. And uh, I think uh, industrial engineering and, man, and management uh, course suited me the best and i also heard about the reputation of the liu and its uh, uh courses and the course structure we have uh many courses and uh, we have uh like a div uh, division of courses like qual quality innovative engineering and also operation management and uh i was really interested in operation management so uh, after my mechanical, uh, I wanted to do industrial engineering and ma and management. And also this course covers a lot of uh, management courses, like uh, we have two advanced project management courses and also corporate social responsibility. So after, uh, after studying this course, I have the capabilities and knowledge how to run a company or how to run an entire department in a manufacturing company. So these these factor attracted me the most to apply for LIU. Okay, right. that that you know you gave me a really smooth transition there to Matthias and and the slides that that we have prepared, uh, where you can actually see the courses that you're talking about. Uh, Matthias, would you like to to talk us through a bit um, the the first year uh, or the whole setup, first and second year of the program? Thank you, Therese. Yes, uh, as you can see here, we're starting with in the fall with uh, five courses, 
uh, and that means that each course is uh, six credits. Uh, we start with the quality management and engineering to give the background in quality, manufacturing, planning and controls, that gives more the background and the basics for operations management, and also project management and organization, which is more of management in project and so on. Uh, and then uh, the second uh, period uh, of the fall, uh, we take uh, lean production and also a new course, Applied Planning and Control in Operation Management. Uh, I'm going to be the, uh, the examiner in that course, but it's started uh, when you come uh, next semester or next year. And the Project Management and Organization course goes through the whole uh, semester in the fall. Then so in the spring, we have... Sorry. Yeah, can I just jump in and ask you? So, so when you start, so so from the from the beginning of the semester to the end of the semester. Sorry, can we have the yeah. slide back? Um, so you know you do project management and organisation. You you kind of study that throughout the semester. And then do you do you read Correct. quality management and engineering and manufacturing planning? Do you read those at the same time as each other as well, or is it one after yes. the other? Yes, we have three three courses at the same time, and then you go to uh, to have your exams in late October. It is uh, for the two first courses, quality and um, manufacturing planning. And then you go on in November, December, uh, where we are now, uh, to take lean production and apply planning. Uh, and in January, you have your uh, exams for that period. So you, you have your Christmas first, and then you come back and have, uh, have the exams. Probably three courses uh, exams uh, in January then. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, well, uh, I would, good. I would like to say the course structure that is uh, that is uh, present in LIU is very organized because you never feel it's too hectic uh, because it's a uh, sub uh, suppose a uh, semester is considered uh, consist of two technical subjects and almost three management subjects which are really fun and 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 also. Uh, Two, two or three technical subjects which are very interactive and uh, which is very interesting as an engineering student. So you never feel it's too hectic or it's too hard. It's very well structured. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, uh, and we have uh, both laboratory work, uh, working in projects, writing papers, uh, and uh, and so on uh, in in the whole. Uh, semester so it's uh, you it's full of work so to say mm -hmm. let's go on to uh, the second semester second semester uh, can you put the picture up a little bit thank you so we are now into the spring and we have two uh, courses uh, as you see in gray which are mandatory all the other courses are also mandatory uh, the gray ones in the fall. So it's research method uh, in management and engineering and corporate social responsibility as uh, Liquid was mentioning. Then you choose your profile. And as you can see, we have three profiles, operations management, quality management or innovation management. And as you can see, there is two courses mandatory for, for the operations and for the quality is also two. And for the innovation, it's only one course that is mandatory. Then you have other courses to choose between. Usually, uh, if you choose the operation management, you take cour two courses and then you take one course from the quality management profile as well, because uh, there is interaction between uh, the two or the three uh, uh, specializations or profiles. And then you're done with the first year and uh, you're coming back for the fall. And there is a mandatory course, a project course in the chosen specialization. So there is three different project courses. This one is, is a, a large one with 12 credits. So it's doubled all the other courses. So that's a big course that you're taking during the fall. And then you keep on going with your, uh, with your profiles, operation quality or innovation management. But there is no mandatory courses in operation and quality, so you, you are a little bit more free to choose other courses. And in the second year, in the spring, 
you do your master thesis where you write your uh, final project and of course this project course in uh, in the fall should help you to know the basic stuff how to 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 write and how to to do a master thesis so that course in in the fall should really help you uh, for the master thesis Great. and we are now in the middle of that course because uh, after this i will go to the midway as we say a midway presentation in the project course mm, okay uh, okay so that's where the the second year students are at the moment Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And Lick, is, you're 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 completing your thesis. What is your thesis on? Well, uh, my thesis is on uh, IoT, uh, Internet of Things in supply chain. So we are investigating the impact, and uh, we are also me uh, we are also measuring the performance of the Internet of Things when applied to supply chain, and uh, we are also investigating the what are the basic steps to for the companies to evolve from the uh, traditional supply chain and apply the uh, new modern industry 4.0 standard internet of things to the supply chain to improve the efficiency of the entire supply chain network so mm -hmm. and uh, uh, i have been doing my thesis uh, with matthias as my supervisor so it's really fun and it's really informative and uh, we learned a lot during this thesis uh, and how to write a thesis so thesis is uh, the lower level of phd study so it is very important in our masters and uh, it was really great to choosing this topic and it's very uh, informative for us mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. So, so what would you like? I mean, this this program is offered in 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 other places too. What sets it apart? I mean, why why should why should students choose niche shopping university? I mean, we were first, but yeah. are we still are we still able to you know uh, be, be be flying on those old old merits? Yeah, uh, like uh, uh, before coming to Lynch Open, I have heard uh, reviews from my friends and. Uh, what they describe as we uh, the uh, teaching style or the uh, education system here uh, is very uh, innovative and very interactive because we get to deal with the real case studies and the real case scenarios and the examiner uh, exams are not only graded by the written answer it is also graded by the assignments that you go through so the assignments is usually the real case studies so for example in the first year itself uh, for the qual uh, quality and statistical control course we had to visit the local cafes and we had to collect the data of, uh, by ourselves in teams so that uh, so that 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 was the first uh, one of the first assignments that we did uh, which was very informative because we had to experience in the real life so that that is the style of the teaching here and uh, that is the uh, e exposure that you get doing these assignments and uh, my fa my favorite assignments was the simulation of the entire production system and supply chain uh, net supply chain network where we had to use uh, some of the softwares like uh, Arena Simulation, which was very interactive, and also AutoCAD to develop a, a 3D layout of the production case study that we had. So you it, basically it, get to what I what I'm hearing from you is you basically get to you, you know you get to do a lot yourselves rather than yes. just listen to yes. lectures. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Um, I'd like to move to, 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 over to you. What what would you say set this sets this program apart? from you know, others in, in Sweden? I think it's uh, because we are so large and so have so many students uh, in our Swedish program, that means that we have a lot of courses that you can choose from. Uh, so the variety and the, the broad uh, perspective uh, gives the program a little bit special touch if you compare it to KTH or Chalmers, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, and also that we we really want to have this uh, technical part, or if, if we call it engineering part, uh, we see that as very vital in our Swedish program, and that means that we also see it as a vital part here, 
So we really want you to come with, as Likid said, with a mechanical background or a computer science background. Uh, that's much better because yeah. it's what we want to have as a basic. Thank you. You see, you, you, you both of you are making this really easy for me today because because I would like to move on to to talking about kind of expectations and what kind of student you know are, are we are we kind of not really looking for but what kind of student would benefit or would succeed mm. in this program so what not just the academic background so you would like somebody mechanical or computer science uh, but also kind of in terms of, of mindset and, and other skills mm. um, yes maybe you should start yeah uh, i mean we have almost 10 years now uh, and we see that students that wants to work both in group uh, but also individual uh, by working in projects uh, be able to write uh, not papers but uh, thesis by themselves we are not telling you exactly what uh, what you should do uh, you need to to do a lot of the work by yourself and of course the teachers are here to guide you but it's it's not that we are giving you everything we want you to be uh, working by yourselves and uh, try to get that so, out of you uh, i don't proactive. know <laughs> no proactive, proactive yeah 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 proactive and independent have you have you noticed this Liki? this this need i mean is that, has that been new to you the need to, to kind of be you know, so much focus on the, the individual student in, in, in being proactive. Yes, uh, well, I, as I said, I come from the mechanical background. So mechanical engineering was completely focused on technical uh, stuff. Uh, but uh, when I do uh, industrial engineering and management in the master's level, so this course is designed to, uh, this course is designed for someone who wants to be in a management post and, uh, someone who wants to run his own factory so that's how i think how if you ask me to describe the course i would say this is like a mba for factories and industries uh, you also have a lot of project management course and uh, you you learn a lot as a team member uh, not only tech not only technical part but also management part so you should be able to run an entire factory by yourself in the end with some experience so basically you, you you need to be able to you know to kind of realize yourselves what needs doing and yes. actually taking those steps to, to achieving that yes and uh, you almost study every department in the uh, manufacturing industry and uh, so uh, this course is especially designed for the people who want to know everything about industries and who wants to work in our projects and lead the projects so matthias we're, we're, we're looking for future project managers yeah for example uh, yes um we're also looking for someone with background from uh, mathematics i don't say that you need to be a mathematician mathematician or but you need to have those uh, skills because sometimes we, we are using uh, statistics or optimization or simulation. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it's good to have that uh, also with you. So maths, no, let me just summarize what I'm, what I'm kind of hearing from you both. This is, is yes. you know, proactive, independent, you know, mechanical engineering, computer science, but with a strong emphasis on on uh, math mathematical skills, but also writing skills and, and English. And writing you know, skills. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, English and writing skills is, is very vital because both in the project course uh, and in the master thesis, uh, you, you need things that are, I mean, 100 pages long with a lot of text and everything is in English and we are not correcting it. It's, it's, uh, you are writing it. So that means, of course, uh, sometimes you are two people working in a group or three people working in a group but it's still uh, that group that produce all those uh, pages uh, with nice text so not just writing but actually reading and being able to kind of quickly read text and take in what it says because as i think there's there's 
two parts of, of, of kind of the language skills there. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the expectations, you know, in, in terms of kind of workload and schedule, I mean, it's a two-year master's program. Uh, you're expected to complete the program in two years. Um, yes. what, what, is it, what is it like? I mean, workload, schedule, are you at, on campus between eight and five every day? Do you, is there a lot of home study? Um, maybe Likith can, can just tell me about, about what the schedule has been like. Uh, the first year and the second year, uh, the, my schedule can be uh, from 8 to 5 or from maybe some days from 8 to 12 even. So uh, I would say it it depends on the course. So you will have some lectures which are uh, which are uh, already like uh, it, it is already fixed. So, so you can't escape from that. And uh, but it also depends on the teamwork that you go through and your team assignments that you do in the campus. So sometimes uh, in one of the courses, I used to stay in the university till eight o'clock and go at eight o'clock in the morning and come back at eight because because the, there's a lot of learning process and uh, you need to work in a team. So uh, sometimes it can be really hectic, but sometimes it can be really easy. But it also depends on how you plan. If you plan perfectly, if you plan your day or plan your week perfectly, it can be really uh, organized and uh, it can be really efficient. No, that's a really good point. Matthias, the, the importance of, of planning, planning your work. Can you say a few Yeah, words? I guess that's one part of industrial engineering and management is to, to, yes. to plan also. So uh, we think it's even more important that you can plan uh, your project or your um, lectures and seminars and so on. But we, of course, help you to, to plan it uh, so there will be no uh, collision between lectures because that is sorted out in a, in a Swedish way. <laughs> so uh, we, we, that shouldn't be a problem. But uh, you, um, you, of course, need to, to plan a lot. Yeah, and I can imagine, especially because you do three courses in parallel. So with the yep. three courses in parallel, you, you do need to be organized and structured to, to be able to succeed and, and make sure everything is, is submitted on time, especially since, as, as Likith mentioned, even the, the coursework counts towards your, your, your grade. And, and, or or yes. is, that, is that correct? Yes. Uh, so I, personally speaking, I have applied a lot of in, uh, industrial tools in my life like in my daily life as well so uh it has made me easy and also talking about the coursework uh some some courses are designed to get your credits only through exams but most of the courses are designed to get your credits uh through the assignments or the team or the teamwork that you do and also examinations so and some courses have the grades purely based on the assignments that you do so uh, it's very important to have your coursework and assignments in time and finish it on time and uh, do it very efficiently so that you get good grades. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Matthias, do you have anything to add to that? No. Uh, usually students say that this is 100% uh, study. So that means that you, you study 40 to 50 hours a week or I guess 40. Mm. So yeah. it's it's not that you, you can work and study at the same time. It's it's, um, it's not doable, not for for the master students and not for the regular or the, the Swedish students either. They, yeah. they It's full with yes, well, studying. This is an important yeah. point to mention actually that, that you know it is, it is quite difficult to find part-time jobs in, in, in Sweden anyway as a non-Swedish speaker but it's also you know you do as, as Likith has, has attested to you know you're, you're at school between eight and sometimes eight in the evening uh, doing labs so it doesn't leave much room for, for part-time work. So it is really important to, to have financing in place and to, to, to know that you can support yourself uh, for, for two years. Um, before we move on to the questions, actually, I, I'd like you both to kind of, you know, give, you know, from Matthias' point of view, I suppose, you know, uh, a, a top tip uh, for students wanting to study this program. And from Likith, I'd like to hear, what do you wish you had known 
uh, before starting the program? What, what kind of, you know, if you could go back and talk to yourself, what would you say to yourself? So, uh, Matthias, you can start. A top tip. Uh, yeah. So you mean... Well, maybe, you know, you should uh, spend some time studying maths in the summer or you should uh, think okay, about... Okay, yeah. yeah? Uh, I don't think you, you need to... If you have been doing your engineering uh, rather close to, to this master program, maybe some uh, repetition of some basic math uh, and also some basic statistics, th that might help you. Otherwise, I think... Uh, uh, working with your English and working with your writing in English uh, is very vital because that is difficult to to work with at the same time as you doing all the other stuff. Uh, mm. So um, and it's not that easy to to do that, but of course you you, you can practice yeah. that uh, yeah. how to to yeah, write yeah. Uh, good reports. Yeah, and spend the summer reading. I think the more you yeah, for example, learn some other language. So that's a really good, really good tip. Thank you. And Zikit, what would you, what do you wish you had known? What would you like to say to yourself? Well, uh, uh, in my course in my bachelor's mechanical engineering, it it covered a uh, few of the industrial uh, engineering uh, topics like operation management and also game theory and uh, uh, functions in uh, in industrial process like the various process uh, which builds a really good uh, bridge between mechanical and industrial engineering but uh, I would say that was uh, what I studied in mechanical was just a tip of the iceberg and you go deeper uh, in your ma in in this master course but uh, other than that uh, you should have a very good vocabulary in English and uh, also you should be really good at writing because we write a lot of reports and uh, we write a lot of technical reports so you need to know how to write a perfect report without any uh, errors or you should also know how to do a research on a paper but other than that technical skills I would say uh, you should know at least the basic in Excel and uh, you should know uh, few tricks and few formulas in Excel because you'll be using Excel in few of the courses. And also, uh, I don't think uh, you need to know much if you are from the engineering background because you'll be well well versed with mathematics. And also, you would, you would be obviously speaking good English. So yeah i don't think you should know much but a uh, few right software that we use like excel you you need to be uh you need to have an idea what is excel and what it can do so other than that the course is designed to gradually start and gradually pick it up so thank you thank you so basically what you're both saying is well both english emphasize on the english try and you know immerse yourself in 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 the world of english writing reading reading and, and, and writing if you can as well but also excel have a play with excel you know learn learn the basic tricks of excel yeah. only the basics yep yeah um, you can see difference some students are really good really in good excel in excel and some of them are uh, not that good. So uh, by working, it's 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 very very good uh, of practicing in Excel. Some some students are better than I am in in Excel, and some are are not. So it, it's not that you need a really really high level, but you you should be familiar with Excel. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, the advantage that you get by working in teams teams is that you can share knowledge, you can share knowledge and skills and you can also learn from the team so it's very important to uh, know how to work in a team oh yeah yeah the group work we haven't really touched upon that which we can maybe do through, during the question section but the 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 kind of emphasis that in sweden you you do there's a lot of group work so you you need to kind of you know learn to to be part of a group and share your knowledge but also understand that you are very much part of a group and everybody needs to contribute equally yes. so i think i think this is this is you know also typically typically swedish in a way at, at university level this this emphasis on group work which i think stands you in good stead for for work life because that's yes. what work life is is about 
Um, and we're going to move over to questions uh, from, from the viewers. Um, but I have a few few points um, I'd like to raise before we do so. Um, since this webinar is being recorded, we're actually going to stop uh, the, the recording. Um, and this will be available um, on our YouTube channel. But the question section won't. Um, also check out our social media. Uh, we have an Instagram account that is run by students. So every week a new student uh, take over the account and they show you their life because the, we haven't really talked about student life so you can see a lot yeah. there um, and it's leanshopping.university uh, we also have a blog called it's called international program students at liu i know which was a long one um, but have a look at that one. Um, it is again written by our students and they give you lots of tips not just tips like this and in, in writing english for example or maths or excel but also tips where to get furniture once you're here where you know how to get your personal number or, or you know the importance of, of of lots of those practical things so have a look there and um, yeah listen to our podcast as well um, so to those of you watching the recording thank you very much uh for having been with us and and goodbye